Hey guys, this is Miss Went, and I want to give you an introduction to this packet you're getting that starts with the page PHET Lab Acid Based Solutions. Okay, so I've got the link for this on your Schoology page. So I am going to go into Schoology, and here's all your acid base stuff in there. And here is um, the paper copy, or I'm sorry, the electronic copy of this paper you got. It's a lot easier to do it on paper, I think. So, but it's there if you need it. And the link for it right up here, and actually I'm going to move those around so they're together. So PHET Acid Based Solutions. So if I open that link up, we come to this page. Okay, so on the introduction, I'm going to click on that first. We're going to go to My Solution Later. And I have a couple things here. I've got a pH meter, which I can dip in the liquid and it will tell me the pH. Now this right here is just pure water and I can see that we started with just water, H2O. And water naturally will break into some ions. Now notice that the arrows here for the equation are going both directions. So some of the things that break apart into ions will be attracted back together again and turn back into water. And for every H3 ion, called hydronium, you're also going to get a, a OH ion called hydroxide. So these are always in equal parts. Um, so there's not more of one than the other. So this is a neutral solution, and you notice the pH is 7 here. Okay. Um, some of the clicks here, if I turn solvent on, that's just going to show all the background water molecules. Um, just to remind you that this is almost 100% water. There's just a few ions that have broken apart in there. Um, I can also look at a graph of how much of everything there is, and I can hide everything if I want to do that. Okay, For tools, the pH meter is probably the most useful, but we also have something called uh, pH paper, which acts similarly to the purple cabbage juice that you'll be doing a lab with. And if you dip the paper in, it changes color, and you compare it to the color scale here, and you can see that it matches the 7. Okay. The other thing we can do is do an electrolyte test. So if you have a bunch of positive and negative ions, they conduct electricity. And I have a source of power here. The power would be running through the wires to the light bulb, but there's a break. We want to see if these particles can complete the circuit. So if I drop that in there, you can see the light bulb is lighting up just a little bit. So this is a weak electrolyte solution. There's only a few charged particles, a few positives and negatives that can make this electricity loop complete. Okay, now instead of the water here, I'm going to give you an example here. You're going to try all of these guys out and see how they're the same and different. So if I click strong acid, notice that suddenly there's a lot more particles and in there and the light bulb test is much brighter because there's so many more particles that can conduct that electricity. Um, if I change it to the pH paper, notice that we've got a pretty dark red color. Looks like it matches up with about the two. And I can use the pH meter to double check as well. Okay, so you're on your paper, you're gonna test all of those guys out. And you're gonna draw, if there's a few ions or a lot, write the equation that's under the picture, what color was the pH paper, what number did the meter say, and then how did the light bulb, was the light bulb bright or dim, or did it not shine at all? So you're gonna do that for all of those possibilities. That's the first page, okay? When you're done with that, you're gonna go to the second page, and these are questions based on your answers on the first page. So you gotta turn your brain on and kind of decide, you know, Okay, when I had a base, what ions did I see? When there was water, what did I have the most of? What was the most of an acid? And I can tell you one of these three is a trick question because the ions were equal. Okay, so you're going to go through those questions, try them out, and then you're going to go to the next part of the simulation that's called my solution. So let me go back to, whoops, the PHET. And if you are on this screen, if you go to the bottom, the little box that says my solution should be there. And this is a chance where you can kind of 
make your own stuff kind of how does things start and end. You still have your same tools that you get to use to test things. You can always check the graph. Um, you can hide stuff if you want to be tricky, but I wouldn't do that. You can turn on the background water if you'd like to. Um, change it from acid to base. So you're going to be using all of this stuff to kind of make up your own solutions. So you're going to set it first to strong acid. Fill in these concentrations and write down what the pH meter says. And then you'll do a similar thing for a strong base. And then try to see what's the pattern. So as your concentration increases by a tenth, so this would be a tenth right here, what happens to the pH? Does it go up by one number or 100 numbers or two numbers or 10 numbers? What pattern do you see as things increase and decrease? Okay, and as you increase the concentration, does the number of ions go up or go down? Okay, so those are the questions you're looking at as you explore these acids and the bases. And then you've got two recap questions here, two things that you thought were interesting that maybe you didn't know before, and if you have a question that you saw that you still don't understand. Okay, so that's all for the simulation, but there is another page on the back of your sheet. Now this is what happens um, when you take an acid or a base, or anything else for that matter, and you put it in water and it dissolves, the ions bust apart. So I wanted to show you an example of one of these, and I apologize, the picture's pretty fuzzy. Um, it just kinda is what it is. I'll try to make this a little bit bigger. So if I take HCl and put it in water, these guys are held together by positive and negative charges, but in the water they're gonna bust apart. So I can use my periodic table to look up and I can see that the H's is hydrogen, and that's going to be whoops, um, a positive plus one ion. And then the Cl, the chlorine, is a negative minus one ion. Okay, so these are the two ions that I make. Now, because I made H plus ions, this is going to be an acid. So over here, I'm going to write acid for this first line. Okay. So next one here, I've got Na for sodium. I check on my periodic table. Na has a plus one charge. And then OH, that's two atoms together, so that's going to be on the back of my periodic table. And OH is hydroxide. That has a negative one charge. Now, anytime you make these OH ions, these hydroxides, that is going to be a base. Okay, so you're going to do that for each of these. Now, eventually, you might come across something such as a uh, letter D here, NaNO3. Na is going to be a positive one charge. The NO3 is nitrite. I would see that on the back of the periodic table. And that's going to be a negative charge. And I didn't get any of these H ions for an acid or these OH ions for a base. So over here, this is not an acid or base. I would write neutral for my answer here. Okay. So every one of these blanks, you use your periodic table to look up the, the ions. Make sure you write the positives and negatives. And remember, some of them might be a plus two or a minus two or a minus three. Make sure you have those numbers on there. And then on the side here, is that an acid or a base or a neutral? Okay. Then if you scroll down a little bit more to the bottom, this is kind of the last part, the, the culmination of the acid base unit. We have a base here, NaOH and we're mixing it with HCl, which is an acid. Now, these reactions are all double replacement reactions. So what happens is I need to break this into ions and switch the two ions around. So I'm gonna grab a pen tool here to do that. So my Na, I know, is a plus one charge. And my OH is a negative one charge. Over here, my hydrogen is a plus one charge. And my chlorine is a negative charge. So I'm going to take 
these two positive charges and I am going to flip flop them around. So what that's going to give me over here is I'm going to have in my positive hydrogen, my H, is now going to be attached to my chlorine. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's wrong. My positive H is now going to be attached to the hydroxide. So this H is now going to be with the OH. And HOH, another way to write that is H2O. So this is actually water. And then on the other side, this chlorine is now going to be attached to the Na. So I will have Na and a Cl. Now, because all of these charges balance, they were all one charge. Um, I don't have to worry about any subscripts, but down below you're going to have to worry about some subscripts. You can see you have some twos here, so you're going to have some plus two charges you have to even out. Okay, so this is this is kind of the thing that, hey, if you can do this, you've got an A, it's all good. Um, if this is something you don't quite master until the test, you can still easily get a B on the test. That's not a problem. Okay, so bust each one into the positive and negative ions using your periodic table. Flip-flop the positives around and see what you get. Now, because we made water over here, this is a reaction between an acid and a base. I had an OH ion and an H ion, so I would take some kind of highlighter, some kind of marker, some kind of something, and I would circle this reaction because this is called a neutralization reaction. I had mixed an acid and base together, they canceled each other out, and I ended up with water. And then this piece over here that you get is called a salt. And we are familiar with the salt we put on our food, on our table, but there's lots of different kinds of salt. Um, there's different kinds of salt we use for our water softeners, different kinds of salt we use to put on roads in the wintertime and things like that. So this is the salt on your table, but you'll see lots of other different kinds of salts as well. So that's this packet, so feel free to work with partner if you like to, and work your way through it. If you have any trouble, check with an adult. They've got an answer key to help you along the way. Have a great day.